Hello, I'm Linda Yu. I'm an economist, broadcaster, and writer, and it's my pleasure to speak to you about the UK's economic outlook. But I won't just paint uh, the picture of the economy. I also want to draw out um, the opportunities and the challenges for businesses, including um, some thoughts about the advertising community. So I want to start off with what the economic outlook for the UK um, might be. I say might because I've just written a book on the great economists and one of them said that economic forecasting exists to make astrology look respectable. And that was during normal times. So it's hugely uncertain um, what the economic outlook is. Um, however, um, we do have a sense of what some of the, the trends are. Now, once you go through those with you, I think the first thing to note is that the scale of the economic damage from the lockdowns, the restrictive measures, the impact of COVID-19 means that national output or GDP is about 10% smaller by the end of 2020 than it was at the start of the year. So what that means is even if we get um, strong growth rates this year, um, it's unlikely that we'll get back to pre-pandemic levels of output and therefore our standard of living. Um, we will not get back to where we were in 2019 until probably next year. Um, and some estimates put that in 2023. So the ability to make sure that the pandemic doesn't scar or damage the potential of the economy has to be a massively important government policy priority. And I want to um, stress that um, in a moment, but first I want to give you uh, where I think um, we should really be focused on in terms of economic indicators, and that is around unemployment. So estimates are putting um, the unemployment rate, um, so that's the number of people who are out of work but seeking work, to be as high as 8% by November. So that means about two and a half million people will be unemployed. That's about a million more than where we are now. And that's the most important factor um, to think about to prevent the downturn from damaging the growth potential of the economy is to keep unemployment low and to re-employ, um, keep people ideally attached to their work, to the labor force, uh, to their businesses, supporting viable businesses. All of that um, is essential uh, to ensure we don't uh, lose um, productive factors as a result of this shock. So the government policies around furlough, the government policies around supporting uh, businesses with cash flow, all of that is likely to continue and be extended beyond the first quarter of this year because the focus on jobs and people um, is so key. So in terms of um, the vaccination uh, impact on all of this, um, that is a brighter spot and the speed of vaccinations as well as the remarkable speed of coming up with these vaccines um, has been very promising for the UK. But this is a global pandemic and so long as the virus exists anywhere in the world, um, it's going to impact um, the way that we um, do our business and the way that we live and the way we operate. And the vaccine distribution globally um, is very uneven. So it's better in the West in advanced economies and it's not as pervasive um, in other parts of the world. So in order to assess where we might get to in terms of um, the recovery, um, we have to look at vaccination distribution, not just here at home, but also um, globally. So I think those are the key factors to think about in terms of the outlook, um, vaccination rates, um, keeping people attached to the workforce and um, recognizing that even if we do have a good rebound this year, we have quite a bit of ground to make up uh, for the lost output. Um, 
of the economy. But in terms of what this means for businesses, um, there are opportunities as well as challenges. So the acceleration of technological um, change during the pandemic um, has been pretty astounding. So it's not just doing uh, virtual events like this, it's also e-commerce, it's also the adjustment to working remotely using technology um, in order to change the way that we can communicate, we can work, we can collaborate. Those trends were already there, um, but it's been accelerated. So the example I like to use is Zoom is great, but you can't be the only person that has it. You have to have adoption elsewhere. And I think that's where the real opportunities are. Economic history tells us that um, the companies and the countries that change the ways in which they work, change business practices and norms to use technology, have an edge, are more productive than firms um, that have the technology but don't deploy it effectively. And most um, of the technologies that we have now, because we've all done this wholesale adoption, whether it continues um, and changes the way we work um, will be um, a big part of how productive our country and our firms um, will be. So that's one key factor. I would also say there are challenges around um, remote working and um, technological change because um, it may require upskilling because um, the economic evidence shows that if you're a mid-skilled worker, um, you actually um, are less able to work remotely for a number of reasons. And some of those can be addressed um, through upskilling, through changing the way businesses operate, but some of that will also require um, investment in digital infrastructure. And this is where the government policies, which are always important in a downturn, but in this uh, pandemic is even more important because um, the economic downturn is linked to the lockdowns and it's been such a dramatic hit to not just us, but to all countries around the world, government has a real role to play in the recovery and not just addressing the impact of the pandemic. So investing in digital infrastructure, supporting uh, the use of technology by companies and greening the economy. So the massive amounts that the government is borrowing to spend, if that could generate better quality, greener growth in the future, that could support a long-term strategic growth aims, um, that would be um, gaining returns in the future for the spending of today. And that would help um, support the economy going ahead. And I think there's real opportunities in this area and better understanding how green technologies um, are being deployed and supporting and shifting uh, the ways in which we work. I think all of those have challenges, of course. Um, however, um, it's an opportunity to also to do a great reset where we can look at not just becoming more productive, but becoming greener and having a better quality of life in the way that um, we act at work and also in our lives. So not just the economy, but society. And I see that um, as um, a point, a great reset point um, to reflect on how we'd like to proceed in the coming um, years. And that leads me to my final thoughts on advertising. Um, so the economic evidence shows that Firms that capture this ethos of the Great Reset, of thinking about the future, acknowledging the challenges, what can be done about it, and supporting um, people as they go through a difficult time, that kind of message um, resonates. And in the last recession from a decade ago, firms that spent, so they didn't cut back, but they spent, and importantly, didn't think about it as spending on advertising, but investing in advertising, in marketing, in R&D, actually did better than firms that cut um, because they had um, positive associations with their products. They had new products to roll out. And these um, business and economic studies show as well that rolling a new uh, products and services out after the midpoint of a recession um, is really when people are beginning to think about um, 
going spending going back to normal a bit more so the timing uh, matters a great deal and all the economic factors that I pointed to um, at the start um, could give a sense as to um, how 2021 uh, could be uh, that midpoint to begin to think about um, how to position your business for the recovery um, as well as uh, managing uh, the impact. And the managing the impact is my final thought on advertising, but also other industries, which is because lockdowns and restrictions will happen at different times in different countries, depending on their vaccination rates and depending on uh, mutations of the virus, being nimble to adjust to remote working um, in different markets um, with people um, that you're working with overseas, whether it's colleagues or customers, um, being able to adjust will be important and indeed targeting different markets that are experiencing lockdown at different times, um, that kind of nimbleness um, will also help as we all learn to live with the virus in this coming year and hope that by next year uh, we will have gone back to um, a great reset, a resetted new normal. Thank you very much.